Okay, so um, I'm thinking about what's at stake. What do you feel is at stake right now? And what do the people need to see in order for that to hit home? Well, this is a great moment, Noth, because we've done nine episodes. And what we've covered so far is uh, amazing. And, and it, it may be too much for people at large to understand. And I'm imagining, you know, if our founding fathers, mothers, elders, 1776ers were here now. Let's say they appeared in Philadelphia to observe what's going on and, and, and listen to us and, and look around at the culture. I mean, it's pretty astounding because I think they would be appalled and alarmed. They'd be impressed in certain ways, but I think they'd be alarmed. Because think of what we've covered so far. We've said that we've not yet listened to the unfinished American Revolution. We're still having old world patterns of thinking that are holding us captive. We're still colonized by the mind. And our culture is colonized culture. It has a depression and a kind of virus. We talked about the matrix effect. We talked about we're not the land of the free. We're a land of ideology. And that's not the highest and best version of ourselves as persons. I mean, all the great wisdom teachers knew that a person is an officer of logos, of the law of the moral law, of the rational law, critical thinking, not ide ideologically bound and cultic and tribal. That's not what it means to be people. And we the people is a call to, of the 1776ers. And when you think not, of the, the trust, of the, the, all the sacrifice, and the uh, trustees, they made us, the, the future generations, their trustees, and, 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 and bestowed on us bequeathed to us uh, the holy experiment. Do people understand what that is? I wonder. We use the words. Holy experiment is a big deal. Couldn't be bigger. It was a, a con almost an evolutionary hope and faith and call. Can we pull off a we the people democracy of self-governance? Could we rise to that occasion and create for the first time in history a true republic, a political space, a civic space that that everyone in our deep diversity would have our sacred individual voice, but also always be unum, pluribus, we the people, one nation under source. They were calling and tapping the source. Because we know in our journey together here that the founders are not the, the individuals, but what they were tapping was a miracle. They're tapping the logos, which is all through the centuries, east, west, north, south. They're trying to get the logos, the, the light of reason, whatever name we use. And, <clears throat> and the, 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 the law of reason, the law of the land, should be e pluribus unum. Pluribus, multiplicity, but always in unity. So I think if our elders were here and, and, and going through the nine episodes, I think they, they would be thrilled to see that did, did women get the right to vote? Yeah. Did we call off and call an end to slavery in one form? Yeah. Did we even go through civil rights and desegregation? Yeah. Did we, were we seeking to call out racism and sexism and homophobia? Good. You know, all of that's good. But are we still bound? Even after 250 years? That's my concern, Nath, is that the sacred trust of the holy experiment is can we become a republic? Not the, how to save our democracy, but can we enter into true democracy and be a, a beacon on the hill, a, a city of light and Philadelphia, brotherly love city, nation, of we the people, one nation under source, indivisible, under law. And I think, in terms of what we've done so far at this point, that to suggest that we're still colonized, and that's our unfinished American evolution revolution. It's a bold thing to say, that we're not a democracy, we're not a political civic space, we're not civilized. Because unless we reach rationality, a rational life, which is the moral consciousness and moral law of dialogue in respect, then we haven't, we haven't crossed into a true democracy space yet. And I think we haven't. And I think if they looked around right now, and I think they would resonate to what we're bringing out in these nine episodes and getting ready to go deeper on your beautiful preamble and your, your music, your songs, your lyrics, and, and taking the old relics of the past and seeing them as tapping their Logos power is relics of the future. <clears throat> they, they, they would 
they would applaud that, I think. And they would be also appalled at what's going on in our culture right now, especially as we enter this year of election, a serious traumatic impeachment is in process, and it seems to be falling apart, and we don't have the same constitutional understanding, and due process is broken. The question is, is our president really following the laws and upholding the Constitution? Are Congress people, men and women, senators, Congress men and women, our judges, are we upholding the Constitution? Have we taken the oath of office? All of this is in question. And I think what we've been suggesting in our journey, as you've held a space as co-host with, with the series, is that <clears throat> to be a human being is to take an oath as a rational being. People don't understand that. If you're just still in the legal land, you know, in the legal mind, the ego-based, me first, my agenda, my program, my vote, my will, my ego will is my will, that's not free will. If I'm laboring under ideology in that adolescent form of our rational life and rational development, we are not yet matured as full persons, as first persons. First meaning tapping what's first, being, reality. The 1776 code. And if we're not persons, philosophers knew to be an awakened moral free agent is to be a person. That's a high status. And unless you shake off the shackles of ideology and tribalism and uncritical thinking, then you're, in effect, sheeple. You're not people. You're, you're followers. You're hackable. You're, you're, you're cultic. You're fanatic. You're fans. You're zealots. These are not marks of a high citizen. And I wonder if people are getting that. You know, I, I, it doesn't look good. I think we're on the brink after 250 years. If our elders were here now, they would worry when Ben Franklin say, a republic, if we can keep it, if we can, it's not that we keep it, if can we do it, can we enter into it? And I think when I think not of how we're seen around the world right now, allegedly as the leaders of the free world, it's a mockery, frankly. I'm ashamed. Is it proud to be American in this moment? When there's a question of can a senator take an oath of office and have a fair trial, and we're even debating that. That means due process. Due process is high. It's rational due process. It's putting the law first. It's not us first. It's not my agenda. It's not my party. It's not partisan. Being a rational being is not being a partisan. It's a kind of apartheid. If I'm in my ideology and my base elected me to hold up that ideology and they're controlling my freedom as an officer of Congress, or the, uh, or, or the Oval Office, m most of all. <clears throat> I'm worried that we're not yet citizens. To be a citizen is to take an oath and pledge allegiance to the Constitution to the, to the, as trustees. Citizens are trustees entrusted by our founders of can you enter into the powerful sacred space, rational space, of we the people of a democracy, demos, or are we sheeple? And I look around and I see a lot of cultic behavior and tribal thinking and apartheid kind of a par partisan. And as a philosopher studying for decades the call of human reason, a reason is not lodged in any one ideology or any ideology. The ideological mind, we pointed out the matrix and the matrix effect. That's, that's a frontier evolutionary invitation in these nine sessions, and, and we have raised some deep, it should be troubling to any listener, any viewer who would go with us really and listen, to suggest we're not free people when we allege to be leaders of the free world. That is serious. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I fear that uh, as people enter into this next electoral system with worried of, is Russia hacking our votes, or could anyone else be externally hacking? When it is clear that if you're not people, if you're not persons, if you're not, you haven't taken an oath of office as a citizen, then we are hackable. Sheeple, if you're not a person and you're just following uh, some ideology, then it's adolescent. You're not, we haven't matured as persons yet. So uh, I'm sorry we took so long because I know we have to run along and do some other things and 
we paused to have this that was amazing. heart to heart. But you thought, well, yeah. that I would I would call on my fellow humans, Americans here in particular, in this seventy seven sure. Have you ever voted? Not voted your will, my will, what I want, and my my candidate. I'm shopping for my candidate I want. That's baby stuff. Sorry. That's irresponsible. Or have I voted, you know, as a trustee, as a trustee of USA? That's a big deal to enter the contract with the people. And to open up the dialogue, real deep dialogue, as we pointed out in the seven stages of becoming a human being, of becoming a, a rational, critical thinker, a, a, an adult human, an American citizen. Dialogue is not an option for reason. It is a heart of reason. And so that's serious what we're, what we're calling on our fellow Americans to look at. Now, as we enter this vote, I hope not that every American, pre-citizen, will ask himself, herself, am I a citizen? I'm, am I a mature, rational person? Am I a free agent? Or have I been colonized? That's serious. I'm, how am I raising my children? Am I you know, cultifying them in the cultic space of tribal thinking and patterns from the old world, so to speak? Or have we made that bold transition of courage to be a, a whole person, a mature person? which is a citizen. How many citizens are there? So I think we need to all look in our hearts as we enter this next election, not in next November 2020, but right now, everyone, to go into the primary. Am I a primary awakened, rational, competent, qualified, literate citizen putting the trust, my role as trustee of this great trust of can we pull off a democracy, the miracle of that? Or are we going to abort that and let it slip away? Because that would be tragic. And we're all in that Titanic together. If we don't pull this off, it's as if we're on a cultural Titanic, rather than Noah's Ark, rising to the awakened citizenship, where love and brotherhood, sisterhood can flourish in Philadelphia, the city of sisterly love, where this founding took place. That's the question. So when, you go to, when we go to vote, it's not in the voting booth and the machine. It's deeper than and prior to that. Am I qualified to go into that booth? Have I taken my oath to truly vote? Have I become a citizen? I, I, you know, I, I'm hoping you know, deeply as we go on that our fellow citizens, uh, we love everyone. We, Whatever your ideology, we're not choosing sides here. The vote before us is to vote in the old way, which is hacked and rigged. Or are we going to really vote, each of us, in our conscience, and our heart vote, to qualify me to become a citizen and vote as a citizen, which is an officer, a human, a person? Am I going as sheeple, blindly, cultically, tribally, partisan? A, a rational being is not partisan. You can't be a partisan and rational. You can't be an ideologue. And if you have an ideology and you're going into the White House, let's say, and you take an oath, you've got to strip and drop that, as the call of 77 made clear. You've got to separate from that to enter the office. If you enter the president's office, you have to become presidential for all the people, but not just for the people, but for the sacred trust of upholding the Constitution. You've got to understand it. Understand the logos. The laws of reason. That's huge. You can't import your... It's not you going to the office with your partisan view and narrative and impose that on all the people. That's incompetent. You can't do that in Congress. You can't do that in Senate. You can't do that as a judge. You can't do it in Supreme Court. And if we don't understand that the, the three equal branches of government are not separate branches, there is an unum that holds it together. The presumption of 1776 you know this, is that logos is unum pluribus, reason, coherence. That's the presumption of 1776. That's the foundation. And if we think that the judiciary is separate and the, the legislative is separate and, the, and each is equal and each has power and we're not in dialogue, we're done. It's over. And we're seeing signs of that now. The presidential office saying no. Congress is saying yes. 
judiciary, what? It's going to take too much time. It was not three separate ways. It was always in dialogue. Unum pluribus, diversity and unity. That's the law of reason. That's the law of 1776. And I think people don't understand that. And what a, an amazing call it is for us to become a full person, a mature, rational being, an officer of the Logos, an officer of the law, as qualified to vote and to be in democracy. I hope all of our fellow Americans will find it in their hearts to do that primary and ask that question. Am I a trustee of 1776? That's what we're saying for 1776 now. Now it's now. We have to be co-founders. It's not that we got it and we're going to follow rules that were given to us. That's missing it. We have to dare to be co-founders with our 1776 elders because it's not them. It's the Logos law that they were opening up for us. The vote now is to save the possibility of our dialogue and not abort our land of the free. We got to do it now. And when we vote in November, that should be the leading and sole concern for, in the heart of every human that's a citizen or claims to be a citizen. I hope that could happen. And that's what we're trying to communicate with our brothers and sisters across this land. Anyway, I know I took a while to share. But I, I pray now in Logos, in the light of Logos, that, that we say, God bless America. Logos, source, bless America. You know, land of the free, home of the brave, e pluribus on them. I, I hope and pray that we can make it. That's the vote. We all have to vote up, the human up. And, and take co-responsibilities as co-founders. We have to, for the first time, have a fiduciary, trustee, co-founders with our elders to enter into true democracy. That's my wish and my hope. Let's hope. <laughs> All right. Let's run along and get on with what we have to do now. All right, cool. Beautiful.